All right, I think I'm on. And um, if I don't look at you, is that I'm thinking of you, okay? First, this is not going to be an organ recital where I play full pieces for you. It's, uh, it's to demonstrate how this organ works. It's not gonna talk too much about the repairs, although I'll say just a little bit about it because there are always questions of what's happening next. How many of you have been here before in previous summers when we were normal for this? We haven't done it for a while, okay. Now the next question is how many of you are engineers? Oh my. No question about wind pressure or wind cages. It's fun. Engineers have certain things they always have to ask. Okay, so folks, um, stop and ask questions at any time. Um, this is a pipe organ, meaning it's not anything to you, new to you, but all the sounds are made with a, with, a, with a section of a few digital sounds. The sounds are made with real pipes, okay? Um, in through this door and way in the back is a great big, huge, fan that's called an organ blower and it's from the original 1926 organ it was examined and was felt that it was just fine there is no reason to have to get a new blower unlike other parts of the organ that is fine there's also a blower in the stairwell in the back um, for the back organ and that the, that that blower provides air the first organ, as you may have heard me say before, was 1926 Skinner organ. And from what I understand from people that remember that, first, they didn't have anything cantilevered out here at all. Everything was back in chambers behind that. There, was a, there were false pipes, a facade of gold pipes that went around the choir loft. And, uh, so that was in 1926. It was stuffed. I understand that there was some kind of fire or something that happened, smoke damage and water damage. They made a decision after numerous letters were written to very famous organists, uh, Thomas, uh, I don't remember Thomas's name right now, uh, Virgil Fox is one, uh, Wilbur Held, other people. What should, you've played here, what should we do with this organ? And they said, get rid of it. So they got rid of it. And this was uh, built by the Cassavant Organ Company in Quebec. It was dedicated in January of 1963. In 2002, we had to replace the console. That's what I'm, this is what I'm sitting, where, where the organist sits. It had to be replaced because the, the 1962, everything, the contacts were going in, it was, cheaper to just buy a new one and uh, put it in. So one night when the session was here, they decided they would break for the meeting and the old console was lifted up on a great big I-beam clear out there and comes down. This new console was put on the I-beam and brought in and swung in. And then for the rest of the summer, they wired it in. Okay. Um, what took up mechanisms in almost three stories over here is now inside the computer, in, inside the, the, the console as computer. There are some electronics back there, but nothing. There's a lot of storage space. Really not good storage space because you have to walk through parts of the organ to get to it and you can easily, easily damage. Pipes are not like plumbing pipes. You literally can take a pipe and squeeze it in half. Am I coming through down there okay so you can hear? Okay, good, good, good. Nobody ran out screaming, so that's good. Okay, you know that we're currently going through renovation of the organ because of one, we had a major electrical challenge with this leaning and we had to put scaffolding up. All these pipes were damaged. They all had to be sent to the factory and uh, toes cut off of the pipe and new ones put on, all kinds of things. And finally, the, I mean, they're back, we've been using them. That's good. That was a huge chunk of money that we had not anticipated having to spend. Because 
parts of the organ were just wearing out because they were, they were old. Just think of a house that was built in 1982. I'm sure you've had to replace some stuff, or 1962, you've had to replace some things, major things. So it's undergoing renovation. Pipes had to be sent back because they had to be just repaired. Some of the wooden pipes cracked. They had to put them together. So you don't, you don't do that in-house. You don't get Gorilla Glue and, and a uh, uh, gizmo that holds it together and do that. No, no, we send them to the AR Shop and Sons in Alliance, Ohio, thankfully, four and a half, oh, sorry, four and a half hours away. And they make pipes for most of the major manufacturers of organs to the organ manufacturer's specification. But there is a load that came back, was it, two Fridays ago, um, and they're down in Fellowship Hall. You may see the behind pieces of furniture. <laughs> we had no other place to put them, big wooden pipes. And locked up in one of the classrooms are some reed pipes that had to be totally redone. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you some, some things inside the pipes that, that go bad. Okay. And then there were mechanical repairs that just had to, just had to happen. And that's, that's ongoing. Okay. There are four keyboards for the hands. Solo division, swell division, great division, choir division. Okay. And there's a third, fourth keyboard, fifth keyboard for your feet. 32, 32 notes of wooden keys. In total, there are 7,000 pipes, as big as your pinky and as big as 32. And the 32, the 32s are not in-house right now. The 32s are an alliance. Because what happened is that the solder all broke from them. They fell and they, were, they, were, they actually were, were not able to repair them, so they had to make the bottom 12, 32, for the bottom 12 of the 32 foot pipes. And they go on their side in there. And that's not, it's still not long enough. They had to, um, what do you talk about when you bend them? Hmm? Bend them back, what do you call that? Okay, they can, you can bend a pipe and, 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 and so forth and it'll still, still sound. Okay. Um, there are 122 ranks or sets of pipes. A rank is a set of pipes that makes a particular sound, okay? 61, a set of 61, okay? There are 122 ranks of pipes in this organ, all with different sounds. Some in the same tone family, but different sounds. My first organ position when I was in high school, I had four ranks of pipes. <laughs> I thought I was something. And then my second one, when I was in college, I had 15, and then moved to 32, and then to 37, and then here. So <laughs> it's gone up. Okay. Uh, okay, set of pipes makes one sound. Let me just show you. Let me just give an example here. This is an example of a flute pipe. And that's all the way up, and it makes that particular kind of sound. Another, another type of pipe sounds different. The preacher preaches without his mask. Can I do that? Okay. Um, then we could have a pipe like this. One pipe for each note. In other words, any pipe you see, and most of the pipes are not what you see. Most of the pipes are behind the walls, okay? And one pipe makes one, one sound. Okay, pipes are made out of wood. They're made out of metal, uh, zinc, tin, copper, a mixture of each. Uh, these pipes, can you see, can you, maybe see, you can see back there where the, the, it's a spotted metal. Can you see the spotted metal up there? where it, it has a, it, it's not completely the same color. That's because it's a mixture of, uh, it's a mixture of metals and the tin comes to the surface. And that's what causes it to be that way. Okay. 
So where are the pipes? Well, I've already mentioned, right here, in the back, and behind shutters. Let's look way at the top. Can you see these shutters that open and close? See them? Okay, so what that does, the sound Okay, and there's a separate pedal for each division, and there's one little gizmo that combines them all together. And th those are operated by what they look like gas pedals down here. We have one, two, three, four gas pedals. And that's, that's what those shades are for. This is the nicest church in the world because some churches wouldn't put up with that business of seeing shades that open. Um, obviously, the lights aren't on during the service, and you're not, they're not really noticeable. But when you start putting, when you start putting in front of the shades, what they call organ grill cloth, you really eat up a lot of the fundamental sound, and it doesn't sound as clear and crystal as it should. And of course, in the balcony, we have the, the back organ. Okay, so I'm at the cockpit of a Boeing 747 with all kinds of uh, mechanisms. Let's go through the different tone the different tones of the organ. We'll start with uh, the reeds. I'm gonna show you what a reed is. Yeah, that trumpet will do it. Uh, next, uh, that, next, next, this one here. Yeah, this one, right here. Okay, this is left over a replacement pipe. Um, a reed, well you can already see it, can't you? So this is, there's this metal, metal, and then brass reed, hear it, if I, that vibrates and creates the sound. It's tuned by moving up and down this wire, which lengthens the reed, you know, in, in reality, how much pressure is on it. And so, sorry, behave back there. That's, that's a trumpet, but there are all kinds of other reeds on the organ. Reeds would be what we call reeds for organs. What we call reeds for organs would be equivalent to woodwinds and brass for an orchestra or a band. So here are a couple. <laughs> That's the smaller one. Try to get ready. And they're all cooperating this morning, even though we have this hot weather. Um, our organ people have been just wonderful in, in putting in just regular old fans to um, draw out the draw out the air in the chambers. It can get 100 degrees up in there, but it seems to be working without spending lots of money just putting a putting a regular exhaust fan up in there, a furnace fan. Okay, so that's now those are kind of solo reeds. There's a nice big one in the back. If you sit in the balcony, you know it could happen any time. That's on shamad, meaning it's horizontal and facing straight down, straight down, underneath the, under the pipes back there. It was so nice, that, that was a very cantankerous set of pipes. And they took it and looked at it and they had to put new reeds in, but they also found that the wind pressure that it was supposed to have over the years had dwindled. And so it was not, it was not you couldn't keep it in tune. It was always something, you always were having to call somebody in on tuning it just before a wedding or something like that. And uh, they found the wind pressure was not right. Uh, it, had just, it had just dwindled. Uh, the wind pressure comes from these mechanisms that are, that are leathered and they go up and down with the wind and they have uh, springs on them. And how many years does it take a spring to kind of loosen up and not be doing its full, full thing, you know? So that's what happened with that. Okay, so those are solar reeds. You don't combine and play those in big chords. Uh, with hymns or any organ piece. But then we have other ones that are uh, just beautiful that mimic 
the orchestral uh, instruments. This is a French horn. And that beautiful stop was left over from the 1926 Skinner. And that is, uh, that, that is one of the best French horns that some of these people that have been coming and, and checking the organ out and putting some things in, rewiring. They thought that that was fake. They thought that that was so perfect that it was digital. And no, that's a 1926 Skinner. And thankfully they kept that. Um, this is an orchestral oboe. And on any of these, you can add what's called a tremulant or tremolo, where the, it, it flutters the wind, and so you get... Take it off. On. Kind of gives a sweetness and very musical sound to those. Okay, this is a corno di bassetto, which is very much like a clarinet. English horn. Corno de Mori, Horn of Love. And they all sound, they're all reeds, but they sound just a little, just a little different. Um, play some more for you. Here's a Vox Humana. Have you heard of a Vox Humana? Voice of Human. Uh, voice of Human is a very old stop. They don't put them in new organs very much. We have one uh, because I think it's worth having. It, it's kind of weird by itself. But you add, combine that with other things. It's in a box. No, it's a reed pipe, but it's actually in a box that's closed up. Okay. We have another one that's bigger that's in the solo division up there, but it's downstairs. It just came back from the hospital. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm anxious to see what, what it sounds like. Okay, so we have some, also some reeds in the, uh, the pedal, a bassoon. Okay. Um, now let's go to the flues. Uh, they are like, just like whistles. Okay, let's see a flue. That's that, that big one that, yeah. No, no. One, one, uh, that, that is a flu, actually, but this is... Flu. Okay, Mary Ellen, not blow into this, would you please? <laughs> this, this, this is the most hot air. This is... Oh. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. This has a... Oh, this is one of these pipes. Can you hold the bottom of that? Yep. So I did. It, it, okay, so this is a flu, like a tin whistle. I know they carry these around. How you think it's going to be a big sound, right? No? Yeah. Not... Foghorn. Okay, a flu. flu, a flu, and under the flues, you have a lot of color. First, we have now, so wood flues can be made out of metal, or they can be made out of wood. Go ahead and hold that one up, and do you mind blowing in the bottom of it? Okay. There's another flu. Okay, they have different sounds. Flu, F-L-U-E, flu. And under flutes are flutes. <laughs> flutes and strings, flutes and strings. So you, you, there are lots of flutes, you already heard some of them. Okay, this one.
Okay, where's this sound coming from? It's back there, All right? Yeah, and so there's lots of flutes. Flutes to the organ are like strings to the orchestra, the found, that kind of a found, the found foundation to a point, to a point. Okay, um, strings. This is a string sound, this with viola de gamba. And one on here. And what, those pipes are rather thin, thin because there's not much development, harmonic development, which is, gives it that string kind of sound. Now, with a string then, you can make a celeste sound, not a celesta, like an orchestra percussive instrument, but a celeste. By this, you add another rank to it, okay, this is one rank, another one to it that is tuned flat, or in some organs, sharp, and here's what it sounds like. It gives you that undulating kind of heavenly thing. The A.R. Chopin sounds by that way. This, this is a flute celeste. A.R. Chopin sounds in Alliance, when they got one, that, one, that one back for repair, they called, that's left over from the 1926 organ, they called all their workers in this huge, huge building. You need to come and hear this stop. It is absolutely exquisite. Isn't that nice? Yeah, yeah. So that's what a celeste is. Here's another one. They tune them flat here. Here's the other rank. The other rank is this. It's flatter. They tune all the celestes here flat. Okay, and if you listen, listen carefully, you can hear the lovely, the lovely wooden celeste that's in the, the celestial division, thanks to Ray and Sue Mers. And the celestial division is up in, behind burlap in the balcony, okay, in the back, in the back. And in the old echo organ chamber, in the old organ, it had nothing in there till this was added. And this very, very quiet, that's real quiet. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, just a second here. Yeah. Just kind of perfumes its way. There's a Vox Humana back there also, the voice of a human. Then the next set of flues would be the principles of the diapasons. They don't, there's no orchestra, orchestral counterpart. It's just pure for the organ. This is all the foundation of the organ. And I'm gonna to talk to you about different pitches in a minute. That's the foundation of the organ. And um, you, you, would, you know that um, it's basically what is the foundation for, for hymns. Okay. Ask questions anytime. Let's talk about pitches. There are on each stop knob, okay, there's a number. This is an old, this is one that was printed wrong. It says forest flute eight. We don't have forest flute, <laughs> so they had to send us another one. Or put a forest flute in and we'll have one. Uh, but there's a number and there's an eight on that one. Eight means that the, the, the main pipe is eight feet long in that, in, that, in that series. And it corresponds to the same pitch as a piano. In other words, if I played this note here at the organ, and I went down to the piano and played the same middle C, it'd be the same pitch. It wouldn't be here, 
It wouldn't be here, it wouldn't be here, and it wouldn't be here. It'd be the very same pitch, eight foot. But if it has a four foot on it, it means that it automatically plays an octave higher. Here's the eight foot, here is four foot, and then two octaves higher, and then all kinds of stuff that goes on way above that. We have a one foot here. Tell me if you, I don't want to embarrass anybody, but you tell me if you can hear this. I hate you because I can't hear those top ones. Uh, I, I, hear, I can hear it here. Can you hear that? I don't like you at all. Can you hear, can you hear this? Oh, well, I can hear that too. There must be something wrong in the middle there. All right, that's a one foot, okay? So eight, four, two, one, okay? Now, let's go the other way. If you're playing eight foot here, you go down, it's 16. We have a 16, because any stop mark 16 is gonna be play automatically an octave lower. So here is the eight foot pitch. Um, okay, octave lower. An octave lower than that's 32. Keeps going down, all right? Now, to make an organ sound or an organ recipe of sound, it's a matter of putting together pitch upon pitch. You, you, you combine pitch, that's what you do. Okay, so it wouldn't be very helpful for you to sing. Does it really support too much congregational singing? But you can add a four to it. Not bad, not bad. You can add a two. So it's piling pitch upon pitch, okay? I'm playing the same keys. Uh, yes, and that's, a, that's actually my next point. Give me one more second, and that's exactly what I'm going to talk about because some people, some, uh, yes, it's up to my just, I'll be back. Okay, same note. Same chord, okay? All right, now, um, let me play the, I, I already played some high notes. I'll play some low ones. Not very helpful, right? Uh, it's in the pedal, and the pedal normally clean, contains the low, the low notes, but, uh, but not always. Here's in the pedal. It's not, even, it's not even polite down there. Uh, um, so, um, okay, I played high pitch, I played the lowest pitch. Um, how do you know what sounds to use on a particular piece of music? Well, that's why you go to school, number one. That, that, that's very helpful, to go to school and to learn how to, how to do that. And a surgeon must learn how to, and not only uh, once he gets into the body, or, or uh, she does uh, the separating of muscles and all kinds of things, you have to learn how to do all that. Organists have to do that too. Um, and often organ music will have on it the sounds that the composer is interested in having. And you have to get close, you try to get as close as you can, but they don't work always on every organ. Going from one organ to another is really a huge difference from one to the other. Big, big time. There's a wonderful Skinner organ up at the um, Masonic uh, Hall Lodge up there. Now, that is a magnificent, absolutely stunning instrument. But you go up there, it's four manuals you play and try to play something, bring the same piece down here, you gotta rethink it, okay? But you try to get it close. Some provide, I mean, Bach told you nothing. Bach had nothing on his music except maybe he'd say use an eight foot stop here and a 16 here. He told you nothing because it was standard organ practice. So he had no idea he'd be very famous today. It was standard organ practice in that, in that time, that 1685, 1750 era, era and the handle was the same thing. They just knew what the general principles were. 
and we can read all kinds of information and learn what those are and get as close as we can. That's part of learning. In the Romantic era, when you get to Cesar Franck and some other people, he did indicate what you're to use, and some people insist on using it exactly the way he says it. Doesn't matter. It says he wants to use a trumpet, a trumpet on the melody, and it doesn't sound right on some organs using the trumpet on the melody. You have to use something else. But some insist on being purists. I am not a purist. Um, okay, uh, so you have to adapt to to every organ. If you sat down at one piano, one to another piano, it's basically basically the same, kind of. Meaning, it's it's going to be a piano, okay, and has just no pitches you have to worry about. It's either going to be tight or loose or bright or smooth or kind of muffled sounding. It's, it's different, but not an organ. All right. Um, ta -dum, ta -dum, ta -dum. We did that. I'm going to play the softest sound and the loudest sound. Can you hear it? What am I playing? You don't hear it? What am I playing? Can? How many of you can hear what I'm playing? Good, because I'm not playing anything. I will now, though. I will now. What was it? It's way in the back in the, in the old echo chamber behind Burlap, the Celestial Division. And of course, this is our softest stop up here. The way the pipes are built. And whether I have the shades open, the, shades. The, the, the stops are made a certain dynamic. Are the stops wood or metal? Pardon me? Are the stops wood or metal? Uh, these, the ones I'm playing right now are made with wood, I mean metal. But there are not a lot of wooden stops in the organ here, but, they're, but, but most of them are metal. This, is, this would be wood. Yeah. Okay. Now, why so many keyboards? One, four keyboards. The top one's called the solo organ because it has a lot of the solo stops on it that we... So on and so forth, and you heard the similar clarinet. All right, that's called the solo organ. Then we have the swell, only because it's called the swell, okay? As most organs, it has dynamic control with these shades, okay? In the time of Bach and those people, they didn't have any of those shades. They didn't, they were all stuck open. So the only way to get a stop to be anything to be quieter, you had to take off sounds, take off sound. Um, okay, so then the great organ has the biggest stops for accompanying and for playing organ literature. And on the bottom is the choir organ, which is not really just for accompanying the choir. It's it's just called the choir. It actually used to be the chair organ in, a, in an English cathedral. You turned around and it was back here. You turned around on your, on your bench or your chair and, and played back there. So, and then of course the pedals are the pedal. Why do we have all this? Well, we want to be able to do things such as to single out, and I've already done that. Um, we have a note, we have an accompaniment down here. And we have a stop on the solo, a flute. Separate, trepper. Or French horn. So I have to have two keyboards to do that. I might want to do that there. Then I might want to come down here on another keyboard. And then to give the kind of sound that has to do with the particular things we do in, in worship. For example, um, I don't think this is real appropriate. Okay, nor 
it, nor is this. Or, or this. No. So there's such a broad emotions in, in a worship service or in all literature that you need to be able to have the equipment to get to those pipes. Yeah. Okay, let's do some gadgets because um, I want to show you the helicopter if you remember, uh, if you remember that from before. Um, the uh, tremolo we already talked about, right? The air, air, air is jiggling. This was just repaired, just Friday. It has never worked. Right up there now. Glad to have it back. All right, uh, Zimbelstern, which means uh, symbol star in German. And we have a louder one. I thought I might want. This is actually digital. They're really rotating bells on a turntable. We have we've had three or four real ones, and they all die. I said, put one in that will not die. So I said, and while you're at it, put a soft one so I can have some quiet. I said, put a bigger one in too, so you. That needs to be tuned. So that's a zimbal stern. And they say, how do you do that? Well, I pull a knob. <laughs> how, do you, how do you do all of this when you're trying to play the hymn? That's what I do. All right, so that's that. Zimbelstern chimes. We have the chimes. These are left over from the 1926 organ. Is that Picasso hitting a bar? It's actually hitting a bar, tube. It's actually hitting a tube, right. Yeah. Then the carillon, which is digital, but is so lovely, uh, given in memory of so many people. Both, we can play it up back here. We can play it, uh, we can play it in the back, as you know. We can also play it outside. And what you have to do when you're practicing is that you have to make sure that it's playing in here. <laughs> when, it, when, it was, when it was first put in, Jerry Taylor came running, running up here and says, you, have, you know what you're doing, you're playing it in here and outside, <laughs> blobbing around trying to figure it out. Because all the things that we play by Carillon I've made the recordings into, a, into the computer uh, by just improvising on a hymn or playing somebody's prepared piece. So it's not something that comes as a package. Package A has all the hymns for, for Pentecost. You know, we don't have that. And it was, was, it was sampled, meaning literally Randy Walker at the Crystal Cathedral in Garden Grove when it was that. In their carillon, the Arvella Schuler carillon was in a basket on a rope with all the microphones that you needed, going from the top to the bottom, sampling each sound, each bell of the carillon. And then they do all kinds of stuff with it in their, in their factory, but it's, it's, um, it, is, it is major tuned, which and a real carillonneur would say, number one, this is horrible because it's digital. Two, it's major tuned, a really a bell is a minor tuned instrument. And, and you're also playing it with a keyboard and not these batons that stick out. If you went to the Carillon, Park Carillon, they had these, these wooden batons that stick out and you play them like this. That's how you play it. Not for me. <laughs> so this is all MIDI control? That is MIDI, that, is, that, that one is, it is. Okay, then we have um, an organ harp, an organ harp, and this is where there's gonna be a test. Don't tell me I lost it. It's the best thing I was doing today. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Well, isn't that terrible? Oh, found it. Okay, this is a celesta lift over from the 1926 organ. These are tubes, real tubes. Not all, not useful for much in in worship, but here and there. So.
What is it? It's Harry Potter, but what? It's Hedwig's theme. I know, I, you, you could tell me anything and I wouldn't know. I know zero about Harry Potter. I think it's wonderful, I should read it. And to talk to grandkids who've read everything from A to Z on that stuff, I, I have no idea, but that's that. Okay, we're gonna move along here. Um, so, but there is, there is also a digital orchestral harp, and that is this. Which is extremely useful. That was sampled note by note by a first class uh, uh, harpist. I've had people say to me, where was the harpist this morning? I said, the harpist is back in uh, Philadelphia. <laughs> and so, anyways, all right. Okay, real quickly, the console that I'm sitting at. There are two consoles, one here, one back there. The one back there plays only what is back there. This one plays back and front. The one, up, the one back there only plays what is back there, okay? Um, How does this one about to play in the back? It, there are knobs that you pull out. It's called, it's called gallery, that's the gallery, that's what they call it, gallery swell, or gallery great to great, celestial to great, all that stuff. You have all these knobs that are here. And I give you a chance afterwards to come down and look at all these, these hundreds of knobs that are here, what they say. They're electrically controlled, that's right. Electric and kind of... Oh, yes, it, it's wired. It's wired and it's computer generated, but it's wired and there's a wire that goes up through the ceiling way back there. It was a... So it's actually connected from here back there. Yes. By wires. By wires, yeah, literally. Yeah. Very, 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 I don't know how, you know, it's like, I don't know how an airplane stays up. And I don't have the slightest idea how an organ really sounds, how they could ever make anything like that to do it. It's so complicated. Yeah, it is amazing. Okay, so I also have here buttons that I can preset. You have all these knobs. I can, I can set them. I was pushing buttons that I already preset, okay? Because you can't be an octopus and const constantly be pulling things out. So those are called pistons. I have two TVs here. One is, uh, shows the chancel, so I can check what the, what the ministers are doing down there, if they've gone to the right place or preaching too long or something. And then this is the aisle, the, the aisle I can see, I, so I can see a bride standing in the door back there, and I can see a bride coming down the aisle and know when the bride has arrived at the front. It's very, very, or when the ushers have finished and I can go to the doxology in normal times. So you have TVs, the cameras, the camera on the one pillar back there, and there's a camera shooting out the front here. And for the first time, they're in color. I have a color for about two years now. They used to be black and white. You had to, it's like reading an x-ray in black and white. You have to know what to read. And uh, it's very nice. It makes you feel very secure. I also have a telephone here that I can call people and they can call me. The secretaries don't like running in to tell me to have a telephone call. And I don't like running down there to take a telephone call. And so it's not unusual for a situation like this to have uh, a telephone. All right, let's do something. We have some gadget on here called a sequencer. I'll show you what we do. Wait a minute. All this is computerized. Open that, okay. Let's see. That's not a speaker, that is the pipes playing. You can record yourself and go down and listen. And it is amazing when you get down there. How, why in the world was I doing such and such a thing when I'm up here inside the organ, I need to hear it how out there where all the, the real people are, right? So that's, that's very helpful to do that. You can do that everything? 
anything. You can do it. You can play a whole organ piece. You can do a, do a whole organ recital that way. It's kind of cheating. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can do that. All right, let's do something else here. Well, I cancel this out. This will be the end. I have no idea. It's big. It's big. Um, okay, there's also a MIDI on this organ. It just came with the 19, or the 2002, uh, 2002 console. It's just, I don't need that. No, it, it's there. You have it. Musical instrument digital interface. Okay, that has all these strange, weird things in it that actually sometimes they're they're usable. Uh, so let me let me just do this for you. Great MIDI A. Okay, let's do this. Okay, we're gonna do. Okay, patch number one is piano. Useless. Let me for this. Okay, let's go to seven. It's harpsichord. Yeah, and then uh, church organ. If the organ ever dies, you can still use this. I'm sure everybody would love it. Kind of useless. All right. How, how about this? Do any of you remember this? Okay, you know the song, but what instrument is that that, that mimicking? Reed organ. Pump organ in the parlor. Pump organ in the parlor. All right, here we go. For timpani. Except that's not it. I don't know where it went. That's not it either. So we will not hear a timpani. All right, we will hear. Here we go. Oh, a synthetic choir. Well, these people, you got to keep them in shape and you tell them you can be replaced. <laughs> kind of. Um, What is that? And you're very good. Okay, okay. There's some other ones that, that could be useful if you had to use them for something. Yeah. Vangelis. Yeah. Seashore. You know, that could start any time during a sermon. <laughs> just just <laughs> gradually, just, gra just gradually do that. And then here's the helicopter. I mentioned that on the patriotic organ recital. If you remember that, I mentioned the helicopter with that. Well, this is, this is it. Just keeps, just keeps coming. And then, last but not least. <laughs> this is so crazy. <laughs> well, that, we're, 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 we're at three minutes beyond time, and um, you're welcome to stay and ask questions. You're welcome to come down and look at the console where I have to sit, where I'm very privileged to sit Sunday after Sunday at this one point. Down there, more pistons. And they do duplicate what you use for hand. Well, thank you. So you're welcome to ask questions. You're welcome to uh, come down up to the console. You're welcome to run home. Run out screaming, whatever you'd like to do. You're wonderful. Uh, the organ is, uh, some things are tuned every, maybe every couple of weeks, just one or two things. You never tune the whole thing all the way through. It would take days, meet weeks. So whenever, it's, it's usually reeds that go out of tune because of humidity and temperature. And they'll, I'll call them and I'll say, we need to have these, 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 these notes tuned. And they go up there and do that quickly. At the same time of the service. Say that one more time. Oh, right. Yeah, we called them and asked them for sure because when we started back in person, we were able to use a carillon. I called over there and I said, uh, just to double check, your service is at 10:30, right? Oh no, we changed it till 9:30.
Good thing I checked because we play the carol on outside, used to, before the service. And that would cream them, I mean, literally. Uh, so we play the inside now before our service, and we play it outside afterwards when they're done. And we always call the Baptist Church and Episcopal Church to see when, uh, for Christmas Eve, what time their services are, and the same thing with Easter, so that we're not doing that. And they have bells over there, and but they know when our service is, so they're okay. So we, we do try to connect. Yeah. Funding can always be received. We just received a hundred thousand dollar bill for work for the pipes, some of the pipes that have been redone. This was a $300,000 operation here. So I, I'm not gonna give a, a pitch, but, but this organ fund that was set up needs lots of money to be able to f do what we're doing. And um, yes, they can always, thank you for asking, they can always, and I didn't plant her there. You can always, <laughs> but I will send your check in the morning. Uh, the, it never, it never, it, it, it's a very, it's nothing unusual for an organ of this size and its age, for it to have, have to have a major, major renovation, or what happens is this doesn't work and that doesn't work, and in five years, half of it doesn't work. And that happens in a lot of churches. That's not what we're gonna do here. Yeah. Thank you. A visiting organist, let's say they're gonna play the annual memorial organ recital, okay? It's going to be October the 10th. Carol Williams, uh, the municipal organist at, uh, no, nothing comes to my mind today, at a big, a big park, Balboa Park, Balboa Park. Anyways, she's coming on Thursday before the recital. We'll spend Thursday, Friday, and Saturday practicing. First thing they do is they sit down and listen to all the different sounds. And then they, they start, their, start registering. Registering means what stops am I going to use on these pieces? And, yeah. Yes. So, John, it occurred to me today, after the church, when we were playing that wonderful piece, you or have there ever been recordings with the lovely acoustics and the sound of the music that you, that you play, and is it available somewhere? The only recordings that we have two CDs, one, and none of them are available. One is a Christmas CD that has some Christmas organ on it, but it's choral. And then the other one is, again, just a general CD. Uh, unless we reissue them, we don't have, we save some for the archive. We probably do need to do that. Yeah. Thanks great. for reminding that everybody about that, Sarah. <laughs> Nobody heard what Sarah said, right? <laughs> I know. That's very nice of you to mention that, ask that. It is not. It is not. It's not because there are copyright issues connected with that. When we made a CD, the CD to make cost ten thousand five hundred dollars. A lot of it was copyright. Thank you. We need to do that. Maybe we can get all this straightened out. And by the way, none of these pipes are, are, are sounding right now. I said they they were repaired. They were sounding. Now they've been taking apart underneath and doing re-leathering. So a lot of them right here are not sounding. And so uh, what, what I'm saying is when all of this is finally done, uh, we should do something like that. You're right. How about our kids' education for younger kids, adult learners, kind of have to learn how to play an organ? Well, the first hundred years are the hardest, and after that, it's really a piece of cake. So they have a way to go, and I, I don't have too many more to go, but they do. Um, there, are, there are fine schools, Westminster Choir College, uh, other colleges that at uh, Duquesne University in Pittsburgh uh, that have magnificent organ programs. I don't think they're overwhelmed with students, but it is getting better. It is getting better. And we have a music resident coming in September, uh, Jason Steiner, who is a graduate of Westminster Choir College in organ and piano, and his organ skills are excellent. We're going we're gonna to tweak them still and accompany and find out how to do all this stuff. He's been 10 months here working with us. That's what people all contributed to the, this fund they have uh, for the organ and for that. So that's, we're trying to be a teaching church. Again, like this is the home of Westminster Choir College, founding home, so we need to be a teaching church. All right, well, thank you all. You're wonderful. Come by and look at all this if you'd like. <laughs> thank you.